Greetings and welcome to Worship with Normandale Lutheran Church. We're delighted you've tuned in no matter what time or where you are that you have joined us for this service of worship designed for August 15th, 2021. I am seated here at the organ bench today because we are celebrating and saying farewell to John Ferguson, our beloved organist for the past five years. Ferg has graced our worship with glorious sounds. We're so grateful for his gifts being shared among us. So we're going to take time in worship today to say thanks to Ferg, but also please encourage you to send your notes and well wishes to him. You can direct those to the church. We'll be sure he gets them. 6100 Normandale Road, Edina, Minnesota 55436. Thank you, Ferg. And we are celebrating our young people who are up at Camp Vermilion for the week, returning just today on the 15th of August. They have been up there in God's creation, building community together. It has been our campers, our junior counselors, our summer interns, alongside Pastor Ian McConnell and Carrie Warnke, our Director of Children's Ministry. Thank you to all who have led, supported, and made this week possible for our young. And finally, I draw your attention again to our Vision 2025 booklet that was sent out to your homes under the title of Seeing Each Other Again for the First Time. We will be hosting three town hall forums beginning today, which is August 15th, following worship 1030 to 1130 in the Fellowship Hall. Wednesday the 18th, following outdoor worship, which is at 630, we'll gather in the Fellowship Hall from 715 to 830. And then finally, next Sunday, August 22nd, which will be following worship again, a town hall forum from 1030 to 1130 in the Fellowship Hall. Please note that masks will be required for all indoor gatherings going forward until further notice. We want to learn more about the Delta variant. We want to protect everyone, and we want to be especially loving and respectful of our young who are among us who are still awaiting an approved vaccine. You'll also want to note that our executive committee lay leadership this week approved a policy by which all employees of Normandale Lutheran Church will be required to be vaccinated going forward. We want people walking into our midst to feel the safety of that knowledge and we're encouraging all of you who are eligible for a vaccine who have yet to receive one please Please step forward and do that for the good and love of all of us. Please take note of the upcoming, upcoming announcements about fall activities, calendar for children, youth, and family, and the precautions being taken so that we might gather in person in all of those scenarios. We wear masks out of love for our neighbor. We wear masks because we love to sing with joy in worship. Dear people, we are together, God's people knit by the Holy Spirit in the grace and love of Jesus Christ. Welcome, welcome to worship. As God's people, we gather humbly, asking God's mercy and forgiveness, giving thanks that God's grace never ends. God of mercy, you, you feed us, us with abundance, and yet we turn away. You pour out your love, and still we forget. Return us to the table of your grace, forgiving our sins, and feeding us again, through Jesus Christ, our bread of life. Come, all you who are hungry, and you will be fed. Come, all you who are lost, and you will be found. Come, all you who live under the weight of guilt and shame, and be set free. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. So, let us pray together the prayer of the day. God of difficult words, speak to us even when we don't understand, so that your voice will be the wisdom we need, the love we long for, and the ground upon which we move and breathe and have life. Through Jesus Christ, who gets between our teeth and abides in us. Amen. Man. I, I don't know the right way to pray. There's there's so many different ways that someone could pray and I I don't know which way is the right one, like the the right way to pray. Oh, oh, hey, hey. dude! I don't know the right way to pray. How how do you guys pray? Oh, we can show you. We oh, we you. just go right on the ground. Come on, do oh. it with us. Do it with us. Oh, okay. We're, you just on lay the on the ground, oh, okay. and then you we're, shout we're at the, the sky. Dear God, thank you for this beautiful day and all these wonderful days at Camp Vermilion. And help Catherine get her way to pray. Amen. Whoa, whoa. You know, you know what? I, I could do that. I easily could, but... You know, I, I may consider that. I could do that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, I hope you find your way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, thank you. Man, I still gotta, gotta find a... Hey! Hey! Hey, um, I don't know the right way to pray. How, how do you guys pray? We pray like this. Okay. okay. Thank you, God, for heaven and earth, which you made on first day of creation. Thank you, God, for the and the seas and everything in between. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I I could do that. I easily could. I'll 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 think about it. But thank you, okay, thank you. Luck. I I appreciate it. Huh. I gotta I gotta find it. Hi. Hey, Hi. hey. How do you, how do you guys pray? We rap. Oh. That's a God is good. God is great. Thank you for the stuff we have today. Amen. Okay. Okay. I I could I could try that, but that is that is another way to pray. There's they just introduced me to all these all these wonderful ways to pray, but they aren't just the right way. You know? They're they're Hey! Hey, how's hey, it going? Good. I'm I'm having a little bit of trouble because I'm oh, I'm wrong? trying to find I'm trying to find the right way to pray. And That's a big question. Yeah, no. and I've been seeing all these wonderful ways that different people pray, and they just aren't the I don't think they're the right one, you know? Yeah, I get that. And you want to know the awesome thing? What? There is no right or wrong way to pray. Really? God's always listening to you, no matter what. If you want to wrap it, if you want to lay down, if you want to shout. Wow. Whatever feels comfortable to you, huh. God will be there. Huh. That that that's really good to know. Yeah. Okay. I'll give you all my right. shot. Dear God, thank you so 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 much for helping me find the right way to pray and to help me find that or help me know that the right way to pray there is no right way to pray. The only right way to pray is to pray how you like. Amen. Amen. That was awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for telling me. Of that. course, Kate. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her animals. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servant girls. She calls from the highest places in the town. You that are simple, turn in here. To those without sense, she says, come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Word of God, word of life. Fear the Lord, you saints of the Lord, for those who fear the Lord lack nothing. The lions are in want and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. Come children and listen to me. I will teach you reverence for the Lord. Who among you takes pleasure in life and desires long life to enjoy prosperity? 
Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from lying words. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The Holy Gospel reading in John, the sixth chapter. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Judeans then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so too whoever eats of me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Not like that which your ancestors ate in the wilderness and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. Jesus said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Friends in Christ, chew on Jesus. Take Jesus in for grace Mercy and peace are yours this day. Amen. My grandfather wore an apron in the 1960s and 70s. To be honest, I never thought a thing of it. Back in the day when women were in the kitchen and men were, uh, well, being men, my grandfather was standing over a stove in an apron. In fact, after our two plus hours of travel to Winona, Minnesota, he would be standing in the bay window of his house, staring out the window, waiting and watching for us wearing an apron. And then he would make his way to the back door as we would get out of the car and I would come in and he would hug me in his apron. Or at least that's what I remember the most. My grandfather fed me, literally fed me. He was known for purchasing our favorite foods before we arrived and then filling us with his abundance. Have you ever had a pound of bacon made just for you and placed on a plate in front of you at the breakfast table? Grandpa's house. Have you ever had a box of frosted flakes, the large family size waiting on the counter when you arrived? Grandpa's kitchen. Have you ever seen the stains on an apron as a sign of God's grace? Grandpa's embrace. As I was sitting at the kitchen table consuming the delights he placed before me, I was taking my grandpa in. His spirit, his heart, his sacrificial love for me. Dear people, chew on Jesus. Our two-year-old spaniel, Cora, is full of vim and vigor. She engages other creatures, especially humans, with, abundance, with an abundance of zeal and affection, so much so that occasionally we need to calm her spirit, providing her with a bone to gnaw on. Somehow this act of gnawing on a bone with the accompanying sound of grinding teeth and jaw-popping intensity brings her into a place of calm that defies my reasoning. But in today's Gospel reading, which is difficult to digest, pun intended. Jesus continues the discourse on the feeding of the 5,000 and into the sixth chapter of John, which we have been marching through in August on the bread of life, that Jesus is the bread of life, not just figuratively and metaphorically, but physically our bread. God's outpouring of God's self in the body and blood of Jesus Christ into us. So as you hear these words of Jesus, unless you eat the flesh of the Son 
of man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. You ought to be struck by the carnal, incarnate nature of a God who asks us to chew, gnaw, and digest the very nature of God in Jesus Christ. Take Jesus in. Because the Greek word there that is used for to eat is really more like to chew on or to gnaw, almost like it's irritatingly stuck in our craw and we work hard to get it down deep within us. So dear people, chew on Jesus, and I mean that. Let Jesus become you. Read the Gospels of Jesus Christ and get them deeply embedded in your soul. See Jesus on the cross making his life a sacrificial abundance for us. Take Jesus into the depth of your being. Digest him and let the nutrition of who he is become you. I have never given birth to a child. I have never breastfed a baby. I will never know the fierce love and joy of feeding a newborn child into growth and life. I'm honestly jealous of that experience. My wife Lisa has breastfed four children into full-bodied human life. She knows what it means to be food for others. And she has spent her life feeding people, literally feeding people. She knows what it means to give of her life for others. God is more like her than me, providing God's life-sustaining self with abundant love. And so feed people. It's the first and primary central characteristic of who God is. As Jesus shares this discourse on bread, bread of life, my blood, my body given for you, we hear again that we have a Savior who longs to feed us. Jesus longs to feed you, to be your bread, to meet you in your place of deepest hunger and need and feed you even before you know what that need is. So dear people of God, chew on Jesus like a pound of bacon just for you. Let Jesus get stuck in your craw until your gnawing draws forth the very spirit of Christ, a pound of grace, a pound of forgiveness, a pound of love, a pound of wisdom, a pound of fear-defying nourishment, a pound of life on a plate right in front of you, more than what you even needed before you even asked. We have a Savior calls us to chew on him, to take him deep within, and to let him become us. So then we will become food for others. So this week, I want you to feed someone. And I don't only mean that emotionally and spiritually. I do mean it that way, but not solely. I mean actually feed someone. Strap on a ser an apron like a servant and feed somebody. Bring food that you have made yourself to a grieving, suffering, lonely friend. Bring food to a child in your midst. Bring food and feed someone. Today we celebrate John Ferguson. And I must admit, he is one of only a few humans who have achieved the status of needing only one name. Elvis, Prince, Madonna, and Ferg. All of them musicians. And dear Ferg, 
you have fed us. With your hands and your feet brushing the petals and keys with the sounds of God's grace, Ferg, you have fed us. With your love for God poured out in your work, Ferg, you have fed us. And with your love for us as you've led us along the pathway of joy in worship, creatively mixing the herbs and spices of notes and rhythms so that we might chew on the God's grace in Jesus Christ, Ferg, you have fed us and we have taken you in to dwell within us in the communion of saints that knows no end. And Ferg, you fed us with even a little dabble of dessert, like earth and all stars, verse four. Thank you for the joy. Thank you for planting God's love in us. Dear people, become food because the world is hungry. Take in Jesus. Devour Jesus. Let Jesus take over your being so that the abundance of God's providence within you can't help but feed others because God is a feeder. And wherever there is food, God's sacred presence and power lives for you, in you, through you, the bread of life for all. And now, I think I'd better go and get my apron on. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Hey everybody, we've been at camp all week. I'm here in the village of, of, uh, of cabins that we've been staying in. And in worship today, we've got leadership from kids from Normandale Lutheran Church and from our Normandale House Reading Buddies program who are all together here. It's great to be alive in, in God's great North Woods. And, and we thank you for your support of uh, the children, youth and family ministry programs and of camp, of sending kids to camp. We have been having an incredible week and we give thanks for the leadership of our children in worship today. Have a great week. And now let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, for all creation and people everywhere according to their need. God of the children, bless our young who have been together at Camp Vermilion this week living in your creation with joy. Build relationships among them so that they may be fed with your abundant love. Bread of life, hear our prayer. God of daily providence, teach us to live mindfully with the food that you bring to us like our parents taught us. May we take time to chew up our food well and smile with thanks as we ingest your goodness. Bread of life, hear our prayer. Bless our congregation and the ministry we share as we envision forward in the power of your Holy Spirit. May our work together please you, our worship bring you joy, and our eyes be full of faith in you. Bread of life, hear our prayer. God of healing, as we continue to wrestle with the COVID-19 virus. Give us guidance and wisdom and compassion for one another as we move forward together. Patience for the journey ahead and endurance to live faithfully into the fullness of public health that we might be drawn together in love. Bread of life, hear our prayer. And today, oh God, we thank you for John Ferguson, for the gifts you've entrusted to him as he has led us in worship. We lift him to you with hearts of thanks and love and entrust him to your ongoing care. Bread of life, hear our prayer. All of this and so much more we bring before you with our voices united, praying together what your son Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. The Lord blesses you and keeps you. The Lord's face shines on you and is gracious to you. The Lord looks upon you with favor and gives you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Be bread to the world. Thanks be to God.